ましたお前無防備すぎるぞ集中してたのでさすがに侵入者が来たら気づきますよそうじゃなくて触られたらもっと怒れ触ってる本人がそれ言いますあらまフレンズ、unnamed memory episode number four number four 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 あー、OK、そう、last week one of the awesome community members in the comments Kind of ruined the show for me a little bit, and it was the most non spoilery thing ever. So don't worry about any kind of spoiler. It wasn't like anything like, oh, this character dies or something crazy like that, like something that is ruining the show. It was just pointing out exactly what was given to us in episode number three. And it kind of effed with me a little bit because in the moment, well, let me say this if you're really digging the show, Uh, which I am, you know, I'm still enjoying the show. I, th I still think it's a pretty good anime. I don't think it's, you know, I don't think it's writing any checks or winning any anime awards, but it's a pretty good show. I think it's still a decent watch. Uh, and I'm still very interested in Tanasha and uh, our, our, our main character, uh, which I just forgot his name right now. Uh, Oscar, our main uh, character, Oscar. Uh, what a name too, Oscar. Uh, but... I'm liking the show and I like I like seeing them get together and their love brew and the, the things and adversities are going to face. But there was one thing from last week and then there's one thing I noticed this week. Those two things might poo poo my overall enjoyment. If I were to give a score based on what I've seen so far, I think that the anime is operating at a solid 7.5 out of 10. Now, you might think that's a little bit low, but that means it's good. It's not, again, it's not writing, writing any checks. It's not winning any awards.、Uh, it's just, but it's, it's a good piece of media and it's a good piece of anime to, to watch and enjoy. But these two things dampened it. Okay, so you're still here. Okay, so here's the thing、uh, let's talk about this episode first. So, episode four. Kind of, kind of runs us through Tanasha's emotions, right? We go on a roller coaster of, and I'm going to get to that comment in a minute, but let me, I want to talk about the episode because that's what you clicked for. The episode kind of took us through her roller coaster of emotions. She's feeling a lot of emotion.、Uh, she's feeling a lot of emotion probably because of a lot of baggage that she's carrying.、Uh, she gets visited by the, by the church this episode. They try to recruit her. For a variety of degrees. They call her by a different name. You have to assume that that was a name that maybe she had or carried with her at the point of her being a part of this kingdom 70 years ago with great great grandpappy or whatever, great grandpappy Oscar, whatever it was. I'm sure that name and that meaning, and I'm sure that name has meaning and significance to Tanasha. Here's the other thing that I'm sure of this episode also again took us through a variety of different emotions. And one of the things that she said when she broke the glass or broke the teapot was all living things, all living organisms have to die. Now, there's a greater meaning behind that, I think, but the secondary meaning is I think that there was somebody very important to her, whether it was great grandpappy or somebody else that she let die that she would have loved to have had the ability or magic to turn back time to. to she's, she's experienced loss, is what I'm trying to say. So, those are through to the emotions that we had. Now, also, there in this episode, she also experienced、uh, kind of PTSD emotions because the church suck one of the girls on her, saying, like, oh, you're here, you're, you're, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're a whore, you know, you're a whore, you're blah, 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 and you know, all this other stuff. And none of it's true, but these are all things that she's heard before when she's tried to enter human realm. And she's like,、oh, I've heard all these things before. And Oscar grabs her and hugs her and comforts her. And he's like, When's the last time you cried? And I think that statement has a lot of significance to it. I think that statement of, When was the last time that you cried? holds a lot of significance. She's like, I can't even remember. That means that she hasn't, she's experienced emotion, but hasn't let those emotions out since she can't even remember when the last time was. That is important. And honestly, that's how some, you become depressed, you know? And that can lead to a lot of just mental tomfoolery. Uh, Taking a step back to the, when she mentioned this episode of All Things Die, here's my first point of contention. She, how do you say it? 
she has so much magic abundance that she just lives. I do think, based on what she's told us, her own words, not my speculation, what the anime has given us is that if she were to allow herself, she would age. So based on that statement alone of her age, because she allowed herself to get aged up a little bit to heal herself. So the other piece is, is I believe that she, if she were to let herself age whatever she did to make that happen, I believe she probably could die. Obviously, no one just, you know, if you, you don't just choose it. But I think the other thing that she's contemplating is her own death. And I think that's why she's training up Oscar to maybe have to kill her at some point, whether it's the behest of her choosing or because she feels like something's going to go awry and she feels like someone needs to get her in line. And that's why she spent most of this episode getting Oscar trained up, trained and ready for that to be able to overcome her if necessary. So because of that, I think that that's my kind of like first point of, of hmm, I don't know how I like that. I don't know if I like the I live too long, I have to die now thing. A lot of anime have done that and it's not one of my favorite tropes. It's not one of my favorite storytelling kind of like uh, pieces, you know, way to kind of convey a story is because the characters live too long. Now they have to die. I don't enjoy that. That's my first po point of story contention that episode four gave me. All right, let me circle back now to the comment. So last week, someone in the comments posted that she's supposed to be a witch, an all-powerful witch, but suddenly she is able, and you could, you could, you could go, hey, this is just, this is just, you know, MC story stuff here, but she's also a perfect swordswoman. She's also a perfect swordsman. She. It's supposed to be the most powerful witch, you know, one of the most powerful witches or whatever. But all of a sudden, she is now like, like a master of the sword. And she can really give Oscar a run for his money, who is just completely only trained in the sword. And she can like whoop ass. And like, I mean, she's like top dog when it comes to swords. So it's like, okay. Now, not only are you the strongest mage or witch or whatever, but you're also the strongest swordswoman. So you're really, really trained and well-trained in the swords that you could not be a witch and just be so crazy powerful with swords. It's like, okay, I get being OP, but there's limitations. Like, are you a witch? Or are you like a, a sword, sword mage, sword witch thing? It's, it's, and I know it's silly, and last week when it happened and when she, you know, uh, embarrassed everybody who's been trained in the sword, uh, I didn't really think anything of it. You know, I was like, oh, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I, just, I, I didn't have one thought about it. But when it was pointed out to me, I was like, that's a little much. It's like she's supposed to be like this witch, like magic and blah, blah, but she's also like swords and, you know, all, you know so it's like obviously it tells you that there's something more to her. And the other part is just lore, right? It's like, oh, it's just, you know, like, uh, what do they call it? Like when you have like that bulletproof lore, whatever you call it. I don't know. There's a word for it. You guys can, uh, I forgot. But there's another thing in there. She's, well, she's lived too long. She's seen too much. Of course she has. She has nothing but boredom and she's trained in the sword. And I get that, you know? Uh, but it's one of the things that I just can't not think about it. And this episode had more of her swordsmanship and stuff. And I was like, ah, that's just a little silly. I like him to peel it back and just be more pure about Oscar and Tanasha falling in love and him penetrating the impenetrable force of a witch who's lived too long and has never experienced true love. Maybe she has in the past, but not to where Oscar can give it to her. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Unnamed Memory Episode 4. I'll see you next week. Peace.